Anakin's gone. I am what remains. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. I am collecting madness. There's always madness in love, and we love collecting. We got a big one today, guys. This being none other than Darth Vader from the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. This is my first Hot Toys Vader, my first DX, and I'm super excited to get back to Star Wars. But before we dive into this sucker, if you are new here and if you're as mad as I am about collecting, go ahead down there and smash that like button. And while you're down there, smash the subscribe button as we have more hot toys coming to the channel as well as some other stuff that you guys may be interested in. So go ahead, please join the channel. We do have a goal of 1500 and I'd appreciate it. But let's get this sucker unboxed because I am anxious. Alright, here we have Darth Vader himself lied out right here. You can see that image of that battle damage head already on the front of the box. This is a Sideshow exclusive. I opted for the Special Edition Deluxe, so you will get both versions. That's why you see a clean helmet here. You do get this cigar band wrap around the side here. And then if we turn the box over, you can see another image of Vader. Darth Vader there on the side, and then some legal stuff. But this is a standard Hot Toys box. What's really cool is what's underneath this is what i'm talking about this whole thing is completely metallic with this crimson red lightsaber just lighting up the whole thing there's so much going on obi-wan himself another image of the battle damage vader which i'm super excited to see that sculpt in person we have reva here grand inquisitor and then the i believe this the fifth brother third sister could be wrong don't quote me on that they haven't announced these two i don't plan on getting them but i do have these two on the channel so if you would like to see that you can check those out uh, on my channel a very very reflective print here of star wars you can see this whole thing is just super reflective a dx logo there as i said this is my first dx hot toys there at the bottom and moving along the side a disney logo and more Star Wars there. And the back is just some more legal stuff, which looks like to be some Mustafar splatters going on. Dunes of Tatooine here. Uh, the Death Star on top there. Um, and it may be the Twin Suns, so this could be Tatooine right here. But let's get this thing slid out. And the artwork just keeps coming, guys. Holy cow. So here we have a clean helmet now, if you guys can see. And Obi-Wan right there on the front. An image of those two fighting on the moon. And the amazing quote, when that helmet is split open, Anakin is gone. I am what remains. And you guys can pause and feel free to read that if you would like. Now if we remove this... It is just a cardboard here with some foam padding underneath to protect the figure. And then we are greeted with Darth Vader. Oh man, this is, this is incredible. So you have features interchangeable control panel, Darth Vader's helmet head, the clean version, a hologram of Grand Inquisitor, and then rolling eyeball function feature right there for Darth Vader. And let's see, once we get this cover off, what he looks like. And let me get some impressions. Now, I was, like I said, this was my most anticipated figure of the year. Anakin is my all-time favorite character. And seeing Hayden and Ewan, you know, back on the big screen in a TV format, oh, it was a beautiful full circle. And, oh, man. I'm going to save my thoughts at the end, but if you haven't noticed already, they're pretty positive. So I'm going to get everything out of here. You can see his hands and stuff here. There is a second tray underneath. 
that houses the cape, display stands, and lightsabers. I'm going to go over all of that individually in just a second. I'm going to do this segment in two parts because there's a little bit to fit in here. So you'll just see this stuff and then the other stuff. So we're going to start off with the clean stuff first. You do get this awesome, awesome panel. It's got a flat black with some LEDs going on throughout for a red and a green button. More of LEDs that would come through right here. And this is the chest box, you know, to how he breathes and stuff. You got a white button and then three gray buttons. Now this is similar or reminiscent to like Rogue One or A New Hope, I believe. Uh, because that's kind of what the film he's going into when Kenobi takes place. And then the back is just pins that you'll connect to the figure, which you'll see later on. Now going on to the helmet, you can see it is very glossy. If we take this off carefully here, how is this? Oh, it's wrapped in plastic, I see. Okay. All right. Now I will say, I got to take a look at this. The lenses, I don't believe, have that red tint, which I think they did in Rogue One. I believe they did in A New Hope. And even the Kenobi show, because I got the one-to-one -one helmet from Black Series. Now, I'm not saying that's completely accurate, but it did have runs len red lenses. And however, this does not. But it is very gorgeous. Do not be fooled by that. Don't let me fool you by saying that. It is super reflective, and I absolutely love this. Unfortunately, I picked this up for the battle damage reason. But if I ever have another Vader that needs a sculpt, then I will use this. Next you get the Grand Inquisitor hologram. It is very detailed. Hot Toys is very good about doing these. Light is able to pass through. There's lines in it like it's a real hologram and there's nothing special besides him just standing on the base there which is pretty cool. You can have him on the floor or in a figure's hand. Speaking of hands, there's actually a ton of them here which I am super happy about. We got some force gesturing hands here. Uh, another force gesturing or open palm hand even though it's kind of slightly bent. Two more force gesturing hands for the left and the right that are very aggressive. A lightsaber holding hand. A fisted hand because Vader does that. And this looks like either a, another lightsaber hand. One smaller for Reva's, one bigger for his. Or you could put him in a pose of like he's grabbing his belt boxes. But I do want to mention it is fluent through all of them. You get this little stitching line that replicates like they are leather all throughout the glove. And I love the rib design going this way. This is my favorite glove, not the Empire Strikes Back. I actually prefer the way these look better. And Hot Toys did a very good job of making it look like leather. So if they wanted to keep going with their pleather stuff they could absolutely do this and that way they could have longer lasting materials now let's move on to the other stuff let's take a look at this cape we will look at it on the figure but i figured while i have it here we might as well look at it solo by itself it is very heavy drapes beautifully it's a nice material it is two ply because you have to have a clean version as you can see and a battle damage version, which there's no lightsaber burns in it. It's fine with me, but for future, if Hot Toys are gonna do this, I would like to see a little bit more detail, but for now, this works. And then you just have a little bit of pleather going around the collar and a plastic chain that is a little bit glossy. Now going over the remaining accessories of this set, you do get this amazing, cool display base that has kind of an imperial flooring with a backlight underneath as well as two more lights down here. Some chrome bits, some metallic poles here for added detail. Um, no nameplate, I'm a little bit disappointed in that. Not to nitpick in this set, you do get a lot, but personally me, I do like the nameplates and I would have loved to see it here. You do get an on off switch here as well as USB-C because this does light up and if you want to you have to provide your own cable which you plug in turn on and then you can see now this base is even cooler and comes to life there's no other lights it's just on the top this is really cool but I think because mine's gonna be in battle damage I probably won't display this 
Now while we're stuck on display bases, you do get this other base that is a more of a rocky style from the moon that Obi-Wan Kenobi and Vader fought on at the end. Um, a lot of people say this is replicated from the Mark 85. I personally don't have that, so I can't confirm that. But either way, this is the first for me, so it's not going to ruin any of my displays. But I'm more than likely going to use this one to go with Vader because one, he's going to be battle damaged in my display. And two, Obi-Wan Kenobi is going to have a similar base to go with it. And when I have those two together, I want it to look like a complete scene. Now you do get a little acrylic pole as well as a arch for the crotch for him to stand on. And if you're not familiar with those, Thanos and Venom had those styles. And it's typically for bigger figures, which makes sense because Vader is a big dude. Speaking of being bigger, if you ever get confused between whose lightsaber is whose, you can just take a look at Vader's as his blade length is significantly taller than Reva's. And that's because her hilt is smaller as well. So going over the hilts that you do get, you get two of Reva's as if they were pulled in half for when he threw one back to her and they kind of fought when she turned on him. That was an epic scene. You do get Vader's hilt by itself um, without the USB uh, power up. And I like the gold detail here. I didn't notice that, but it just shows that they keep switching up stuff just like they did with Luke's lightsaber from Anakin to Luke A New Hope to Empire to Return of the Jedi. Like it's all different. So Vader having different pieces and different lightsaber styles as well is actually kind of cool and little Easter eggs. I think it's cool at least, that's just me. Now you can plug in each of these to the sabers. You get a swooshing effect here, that being in red crimson, or you can put the regular one in as well. And then you have the option for the USB feature, which lights up, and we will see that later on in the video as well. Next, to power it all up, you do get a Hot Toys control panel has the little logo there on the front and it does clip onto the back of the belt. Now I do wish they used the feature that they did with Reva and Grand Inquisitor and that being that it attaches to the base or the stand, you know, the pole. Um, because this is acrylic, I guess they could have done a round one, but who knows and we'll see how it works later on. And then the final piece is the Hot Toys stamped eyeball mover. Yep, that's right. His eyeball moves, but it's just one. So it's kind of creepy, and we'll take a look at that later as well. So here I have Vader, and I started him out in his clean look because I'm saving that battle damage for last. Um, he just looks fantastic. He's a big dude, as you can see, all the way down. So if we're starting off with this head, it is that gloss black helmet that you can tilt forward and back, side to side spin around I think uh, you got to be careful because sounded like it got caught on the chest pad here we don't want to do any of that speaking of his chest plate or like armor plate shoulder plate here it is flexible so when you pose it up it does move so don't be too concerned with that you do get the under tunic going under the pads you can however remove everything to get it over if that's what you would like we do have the clean box here installed on the figure, his belt that is scuffed up and weathered with a pleather belt underneath. Some more of that, um, actually this is not pleather, this is sculpted plastic that looks like pleather. So very good Hot Toys, look at that, they can do it because they did it with Redmond and now they've done it with Vader so I don't know why they keep doing pleather boots and pleather belts and stuff like that. but. The whole undersuit is completely pleather. And then you got some sculpted shin guards that if you hear are on Velcro straps. So if you would like to remove those to pose his foot, which you can do, you can absolutely do so. Just be careful it is sharp here on the bottom and you don't wanna dig it into the pleather as you could probably and most likely damage the figure. Going underneath, there is a little bit of tread and then the standard Hot Toy stamps and Lucas stamps right there on the bottom. Going over the back of the figure, it's not a complete, you know, shoulder pad here, but that's okay because the cape will cover it anyway. And then you already have the wires pre-installed to light everything up 
as well as one coming around the shoulder here. And we'll get that box on here in just a sec. Going over more of the under tunic cape thing here. It has no wire in it, but it is two ply and it does drape beautifully. One final note, forgot to mention on the side here, you do get his hook to hang his lightsaber on. So here we have everything hooked up. I hooked it up in the order that made sense. When I have the box standing upright, I put this cable here, it's the only one, that cable there, it's the only one, and then I put this back one furthest this way because the lightsaber cable is short and I wanted it to be long enough to at least reach his hand. But now that it's all plugged up, we can switch the switch on, and this is what the figure looks like. They are very, very bright, and I give Hot Toys props for that as there's so much lighting here. You can absolutely see it in this light, and that makes me really happy as when I have him standing in my detox, you'll still be able to see him lit. Now, with this lit, let's go ahead, get the cape on over this, and start switching out some pieces to see the battle damage. Actually, before I do that, I just found one other feature. If you go all the way down, it just lights the belt boxes. When you go all the way up, then it lights both. So in the middle is the off switch, which is pretty cool. I don't know why they would do that. I guess for if you don't want the battle damage lit, but I think I would like that lit to kind of show, you know, some detail. Holy crap. Having the cape on literally brings the figure to life. Like, I thought it was already Vader, but now having this on really makes him look even more bulkier and even more menacing. So it's kind of crazy that the cape does that. Now, as you can see, this is the clean version. I am a person who likes to kind of have the cape underneath his helmet. Um, I think it just looks better that way how it's supposed to. Although he did wear it outside in some scenes and I don't know why it's different in certain scenes, but it is. so. You're not wrong or right in whichever way you decide to display it. At the end of the day, it's your collection, so do whatever you want. But I just wanted to see it all lit up with the cape. This looks absolutely sick. Let me know what you guys think down below. Now let's start switching out some pieces. So we might do that on camera here. Popping off this head makes me so nervous just because of those tusks. And you kind of have to tug, just be careful. The cape you can see right here just comes off just like that. Let's get these battle damage chest plate on here. And you can see the LED lights up underneath and they still work when you put this piece on and it is that easy, it just swaps on. Now you can display it like this, as I said earlier, with just these boxes here lit and not the chest plate. So whatever you wanna do is completely your choice. And then taking the battle damage part, we have to flip, put him down. We have to flip this inside out now with the battle damage facing outside. And we're gonna pop this damage sculpt on. I just wanted to let you guys know something to be aware. This peg inside this rubber gasket looking piece does move around and you don't wanna pinch the plastic. So just make sure you push this forward or backwards so that it's even around here before you pop the head off. Guys, take a look at this. This is the money shot. This is absolutely how I will be displaying my Vader with the battle damage all lit up. This looks absolutely sick and incredible at the battle damage on the back there as you can see. Now if you did see a glimpse of me putting this hat on, you did notice that this piece pops off and that's because you can get to the back of the figure to move the eyeball which if I can focus here, you saw it move all the way to the left there, to the right. I think I might have them looking up. I'll play with it more before I put them in the display, but that's really sick. And then you can see all the detail. There's like bluing and charred marks going along this thing. It's just completely disheveled. Even this part of the helmet is destroyed. Just really, really incredible and props to Hot Toys. Now I showed you 
what the other head did posing wise this one does the same thing looking left and right be careful on these tusks that you just maybe want to pose under the chin or the back of the head the side maybe it's a little looser for this helmet so just be more careful with this helmet um, but as far as the rest of his posing goes um, as I showed you the arms do go out he does have um, some bending in the arm it looks like he gets a little bit past 90 um, may feel like soft ratchets yeah very soft ratchets um, so they go back he doesn't do anything crazy so just be careful of that does rotate and bend and stuff um, and the gloves rotate um, he's not having too much crunch or twist because of everything going on here but he absolutely will do what you want him to so just wrapping up on Darth Vader and giving you my final thoughts here this set is absolutely gorgeous I love everything you can do with them as far as the swap out pieces go that just gives endless opportunity for poses and being able to ultimately always change up your display as sometimes you can get bored with the pose promise you as far as it looks right now you won't get bored with this guy um, he's an absolute dark lord that is just what he is he towers over everybody and his presence alone is just intimidating the helmet on this is really a gorgeous piece and it's nice and glossy has the contrast of the mask just like in the original films and then we get to that battle damage sculpt and it was the first time we got to see Hayden behind the mask like that and not just being put into the suit like in Revenge of the Sith but actually being behind the mask and hearing his voice mixed in with Darth Vader it just gave ultimate goosebumps and I couldn't be happier I'm so happy to have this figure in my collection and if you did not pick it up I highly suggest going and finding this one as I do have a feeling he will be worth something in the long run and if he's not like I still think he's gonna be sought after in some way shape or form I mean how can you not it's Darth Vader the, the Sith Lord but that'll do it for today guys if you enjoyed this video please leave a like as I said comment down below what you think and how I did on this video as I absolutely enjoyed it and as always guys take care and I'll catch you in the next one